Hey guys, welcome to DevOps School. In this video tutorial, we are going to learn about Maven. Maven is a build automation tool. It simplifies and standardizes the project build process. It handles compilation, distribution, documentation, team collaboration, and other tasks seamlessly. Maven increases reusability and takes care of most of the build related tasks. After going through this session, I promise you that the concept and understanding of the Maven will be absolutely clear to you. But before we begin, let me inform you a few things about us. DevOps School is one of the leading platform which offers DevOps, Cloud and Containers Technology training and certification programs for freshers and established professionals who wish to update and consolidate their skills in the dynamic IT scenario. We ensure that the training solutions are delivered by highly experienced domain experts with practical working experience in various verticals. You can join our all training programs globally through online platforms and if you are looking for a classroom workshop then we have regular batches available in Hyderabad and Bangalore. Check out the dates and enroll with us for our upcoming batches. For more info, link and contact details are mentioned in the description below. What is Maven? Okay. So before that, let me put it in this way. Are we having any project manager in this uh, session? Or maybe you would not like to reveal it. Okay, fine. Okay, so it's like this. We have one product. X to be developed. Okay, and the name of the product is product X. And this has been assigned to manager, we call it manager X, okay? And he is supposed to develop a software and by having standards of quality release, greater standards, okay? Immediate release, immediate release and also cost effectiveness. These are the primary goals you have it. So you must be wondering what's the great about it, these goals. Every manager, every project has these goals. But these goals is redefined in DevOps. So if you want to understand more about the DevOps, you have to watch that video. Okay. So now these goals are redefined in the DevOps and you have to, in, in, you have to implement this. Quality release, immediate release and cost. Now. When you talk about this uh, manager X is developing a product X, he is going to develop, he is going to hire architect team, he is going to hire development team, he is going to hire QA team, he is going to hire IT team, he is going to hire DB team, uh, he is going to hire operations, he is going to hire lead and all stuff like that. All people will be hired, right? And once all these people will be hired, then planning will be started. Planning would be started. Okay, planning would be started for the, uh, uh, with the help of architect. And after that, you have one issues like, let's say you have a 10 features, so module 10, okay, 10 modules you have in the software. So how can you collaborate the source code? Because you have a 10 uh, modules and 10 different developers is working on this. So how can you collaborate the source code? So there's a problem which we have source code collaboration or integration whatever you want to put it okay integration and how do you resolve this code source integration with which tool we learn get okay now we learn get so you know that how can you multiple how can multiple people work uh, in the same repository and integrate together rather than talk to talking to individual to integrate the source code okay but the problem what we have here are you going to give this source code to the QA and operations no you are not able to give so if you have a source code you are going to convert the source code just a second give me two second my charger is not working properly
Okay, so now uh, you have a source code in Git. You could able to uh, integrate out the source code. All the people have started working on the Git. That's wonderful. You got the source code now, but are you going to give the source code to the QA people to test it or your client? No, you are going, not going to give the source code. Uh, you are going to convert the source code into the binary. Into the binaries. Okay, you are going to convert that source code into the binaries. Now, that's a one process. But after the binary, you are going to package it. You are going to package it. After the packaging, probably before the packaging itself, you want to do the unit test cases done. What is the unit test cases? Unit test cases which has been written by the developers only, those who write a program to verify all the functionality, whatever is been written, that is perfect, that's fine, that's wonderful. So, you can write a uh, unit testing done so you have to convert the source code into the binaries you have to run your unit test cases you have to convert your binary into the packages and then deploy copy into the FTP or share drive or Nexus repository which is a mean for the package report packages Nexus or artifact, let's call it artifact repository, repository, which is the next session I'll talk about tomorrow. Okay. So now, so you got the source in code integration done with the help of the Git, but you have all these things. You have to convert the source into the binaries, you have to run the unit test cases, you have to run the packages, and you have to copy the source code and stuff like that. But also, converting the source code into binary is not easy task. Okay, it's not easy task. You have a multiple platform, let's say uh, platform, that means you have to compile for the Windows, you have to compile for the Linux, you have a multiple compiler also, maybe your source code is in uh, Java or maybe it's in .NET, okay, you have .NET or maybe you have a, a 10 different environment settings has to be made before the compilation and after that you have to create a directory structure, create a directory structure directory structure then uh, like a build lib jar this that and all then you have to copy the source code source code from from git to directories local directories where we have a build server then uh, uh, copy the dependencies again you know that nowadays a lot of dependencies are there like most of the developers are writing the code using the external libraries some sometimes you have an external dependency so that means the external library has to be copied sometimes you have internal dependency that's like 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 a mod, module 1 is dependent on module 2 module 10 is dependent on module 6 like that so you have so many things so much things you have in order to convert the source code into binaries you have might have to convert compile on windows you might have to compile in linux you have to have a different compilers you have a different 10 environments you have to create a directory structure you have to copy the source file you have to uh, make sure that the dependencies match and then then you do the compile test package and all the stuff so a lot of things are there i'm just putting and i'm just putting few things just to help you to visualization okay once you get into the project you might have to zip it you have to might to un extract it you might have to validate it you have, might have to sign it a lot of other things okay you might have to change the permission this that and all kind of things now this is okay you this is okay but this activities you have to do 20 times in a day 20 times in a day and this is a problem because here you have a lot of activities and you are expecting this to be done in 20 times in a day so who's going to do whether you want to do manual or automated so of course if it is a repetitive work then you cannot do manual you know that why because you cannot do the manual why because you are the human being you have a brain and you can utilize your brain to automate the process now when you talk about the automation then what you going to use in automation how to automate how to automate all these processes 
then probably you might be thinking like Perl, okay, Python, okay, might be you are looking for the bash, okay, might be batch, okay. So any things uh, you can uh, use for the automating this thing. But do you know, Perl, is it easy to learn? No, it's difficult to learn. Share, extend, debug, and things like that. Blah blah blah. Okay, so very difficult to learn. It will consume lots of time, and also it's not easy to share. That means if I have my Perl script written, and if I'm sharing with you, then you should also know the Perl and Python, whatever it is. Yes, I know that Bash and Batch is uh, easy to learn, but it's not multi-platform. Like it's not work. It's only working on the Linux only. Okay, here is Batch only, Windows only. So we need one tool which is easy to learn. We need what we need. What we need one tool which is easy to learn, easy to share, easy to extend, easy to debug, and same time multi-platform and multi platform support so what what are you going to do you're going to find the d uh, you're going to find out the uh, scripting or languages which will be helping you to automate all this process in a minimal span of time okay so what are those programming la or scripting languages we have solutions are and we call it build management system okay build management system and solutions are Started. I'm starting from the very edges actually. Make file. Then we got ant, and uh, and we got maven. Then we got gradle. These are the extensions I'm talking about. From the make file, if you talk about in .NET, you got an ant. Here we got ms build, and that's all. So in the .NET. Java world, this is the one, and .NET, we have this one. So basically, we need to learn and mapen or Gradle, and and MS Build, and tools like that to automate all these things, whatever we have. So now, if someone asks you why you are using Maven or why using MS Build or why using Ant and Anant, then you know you have an answer. Any confusion on that? Why we are learning Maven? Any questions? I have a question about the uh, source code into the uh, binary. Yeah. Why uh, Why are we converting source code into the binary? Why we are converting the source code into the binary? That's a, that's a wonderful question. So it's like this. The file which we can understand, our hardware cannot understand. Okay. Hardware can understand the file which has to be in the binary in the form of 0 and 1 and stuff like that. Okay. Machine, whatever the language, whatever the file they understand, we cannot understand. And whatever we can understand, our machine cannot understand. And so for that, we need a compiler, is a kind of broker in between. So you have a source file, let's say you have written a Java file, okay, dot Java. This is human readable, that means I can understand. And to machine to understand, you have to convert that to into a class file. Okay, that is machine, and we call it binary. Okay, binary, zero and one format. Okay, mm -hmm. now this can be done using the compiler. Okay, compiler. But there are few languages, and this is same as with the .NET also. Same process with the .NET also. You create an object file, you create a DLL file, you create all these kind of things. Okay, the same as it is. Now, when there are few languages which is interpreted languages like a PHP, like Perl. Okay, this is called interpreter languages. That means what is happening? You don't need to set the compiler, but 
compilation and interpretation interpretation happening same time so you don't need to set the compiler but directly you can use interpreter so like that okay so there's a two kind of languages compiled language interpreted language so here compilation and interpretation happen happen in the same time here first you compile get the manady and interpretation happen with the jre and stuff like that so is that answer your question yeah yeah thanks yeah any other language any other question yeah rajesh um uh, yeah, can you hear me yes uh yeah apart from these build tools for uh, java and dot net do you um, have any idea um, we have the build tools for mainframe i mean the cobol technology uh i am so sorry i am not working i have never worked with the cobol related uh, things so i'll not be able to give any advice but probably if you could google it you'll find it actually for sure i'm damn sure about it okay all right any other in fact you can it's, it's like this let me tell you see cobol is a programming language so it's not like they are saying you cannot use ant or you cannot use maven you cannot use Ma, uh, map uh, mamus build you can still use this one because when i say java so it's like you probably misinterpreted like okay if the project is dot net i have to use this one no you still can use ant and maven for that okay but if you use maven for the dot net you have to have a more learning aspects more learning aspect but if you use this technology which has many features in built for the java so very less in, uh, time in, in terms of implementation so ultimately you want to save time and that's a, that's all about it so you use it okay okay so adi did you understand why we are using Ma maven yes yes okay now let yes i got it. yeah so now let's get into that world of maven before that let me tell you there is a two kind of uh, 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 scripting languages we have in the build management system these are called build management build tools build management and all there are two kind of there is a one which call it declarative declarative okay be mindful of order okay that's important declarative and another we call it procedures procedural language okay i'm sorry for the typo sometime i do the mistake procedures portion i hope this is correct procedural yeah this is right okay so now uh, there is a two kind of uh, scripting we have in the build management system declarative and procedural so now let me put it what is a declarative can you hear me guys i think there is a some network issues can you can you hear me yeah, i can okay cool yeah yeah so now there is a two kind of languages declarative and procedurals so ant is a declarative uh anant is a declarative ms build is a declarative and gradle unfortunately too is declarative okay but maven is procedural so what is the difference between a declarative and procedural i'll talk about it but before that let me tell you if you want to learn and go through the videos we have uploaded the videos if you want to learn and and go through the videos we have a videos for that i have taken the session in the past and uploaded it if you want to learn maven you are in right class if you want to learn ms build you have to attend the next uh, tomorrow session you want to learn the gradle you have to attend the next week session so these three tools i am teaching you these two tools you have to learn from yourself if you want through videos okay now coming back to the declarative and procedurals so declarative is like this see what you you are doing these are the thing you are compiling creating uh, let's look at this one not much actually just look at this one okay so creating a directory structure copying the source file copy the dependencies compilation testing packaging setting environment a lot of things you do that right so now if you do this a lot of things step by step okay step by step and write it in your logic and then you test it debug it and make it working 
every step you have to write it down every steps copying the file compiling the file creating a directory deleting the file setting the environment variable uh, testing it packaging it everything you have to do line by line coding okay it's like you have to write everything line everything as per your plan you have to become you know kind of uh, you know programmer in this actually everything has to be written line by line and where you written step by step write to your own logic so basically that is called declarative language why because if i give you this assignment to all of you every one of you will write in your own logic your own way your own different styles and that's the problem that's not that was not a problem but that become a problem for the company which is called apache okay so may they may not be using this and and, and uh, ms build and gradle might not be a problem for you but that become a problem for the apache.org why because apache.org manage thousands of open source project okay that uh, apache.org is running the thousands of open source project they do not have employ do not have employ okay just like we you and me working for the some company they do not have it they have contributor contributor and who spend their time whenever they are free so basically if you have a thousands of project so you cannot hire thousands of build and release engineers you cannot hire thousands of devops engineers okay they have to automate managing the thousands of project in a certain ways okay so if you start writing a step by step instruction for each of these project uh, this is going to they are going to spend ages actually so to avoid this problem apache.org has come up with the kind of things like if you look at the each project each thousands of project you do the certain activities fixed like a creating a directory structure you create some directory structure anyways maybe harish is creating a uh, for keeping the source code he is creating a directory structure that is called src and maybe fred is having source and maybe hiren is having uh, let's like source code no different directory structure you created but you create the directory structure you uh, again copy the external and internal dependencies you compile it you test it you package it you do everything for each of these project so what they did they found out the pattern out of it all the project which is the common pattern common requirement and they write a functionality and with a set rules that means they say i am introducing a tool for my managing all these thousand projects in each of these project compilation creation deletion everything will be done as per the process and it will be same as it is it will be same as it is so that means all the projects the build glitch uh, compilation copying deleting the, all these activities is set as per the set rule that means there is no changes that means if you understand one project of the apache uh, then you can understand any other project that means where is the source code where is the well, binaries where is the packages what is the name what is the dependencies what are the internal dependencies or the external dependencies what are the properties you have set so if you understand one then you can understand any project because all this has been automated in maven okay so that is the inception of the maven and this idea this product what they basically developed for themselves but this tool was liked by the many enterprise company which we were managing multiple project multiple project so now what i am going to show you i am going to show you one slide which will help you to give give you the perspective in a better way uh, tutorials maven
If you look at this slide, most of the time you do this one. Project name, create a directory structure, build prepare, library dependencies, compile, testing, packaging, versioning, deployment, site generation, cleanup. So all these things you do typically repetitive things. So if you are managing thousands of projects, you have to do all these repetitive things. But you, everyone is doing in the different style. So all these things where you have in and everything is manual. That means you have to write it down with your logic. But in Maven, everything is automated. Okay. Can you hear me guys? Am I breaking with you? Can you hear me guys? Am I breaking with you? Hello? Yep. 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 Okay. Cool. Oh, cool. Okay. Now, if I, uh, I wanted to show you this one, how the Maven is different from others. So, if you look at this slide here, everything from the starting from the project directory structure creation, build preparation, compile testing, packaging, working, deployment, site generation and cleanup, everything has been automated in Maven, whereas in AND, everything you have to do your own style. That means you, everyone has to write if you are using AND 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 MS build, your own style, your own step by step procedures uh, and but here everything is, has been automated. Okay? Still are you not getting my voice? It's, it's it's fine now. Okay, okay, great. Okay, so did you miss anything which I said? Which uh, the important things between the dev, uh, Maven and AND? Swati, did you miss? Oh. I, I missed, I think, maybe one or two lines. Okay, great. No problem in that. Okay, so what I was trying to tell you, Maven, uh, let me recap this thing. We have to convert the source code into the binary. We have to deploy, uh, we have to uh, compile that source code in the Windows and uh, Linux. We need to set the environment variable. We have to do certain things and that is needed. Why we need it? Because we are going to convert that source code to binaries and packages and that will be consumed by the QA. And that we have to do n number of times, multiple times. So that's the reason we cannot do manually. You have to do automate it. But again, for automation, we do not use the languages like Perl, Python, Bash, and Batch. Why? Because they have a difficult to learn and it's not multi-platform. So we need the languages which is easy to learn and share. And that is the reason we are using the build tools or build management system. So basically, these are the tools which we have popular. Uh, make file and Maven, Gradle and, and MS build. Today we are talking about the M Maven. So how this Maven is different from others? So Maven is procedural. That means everything has been automated and you have to follow the process which is defined by the Maven. So Maven says, if you want me to automate everything for you, you have to follow me. But declarative language is like and, 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 and MS build and Gradle. No, you have to write, I'll give you the option in which you have to write your own things. You have to write in your own style, whichever way you like it, go ahead. Okay, and implement it. Okay, so this is called declarative. This is a procedural. So most of the things in the Maven, which is a declarative scripting language, which has been automated. So you must be wondering if it is automated, then what I'm going to learn here. So basically, I will teach you not the Maven scripting, but I will teach you how to use Maven, how to understand the Maven and how it works. Because I'm not going to teach any scripting because there's, there's no scripting. Just you need to understand how it works because everything you can see on this slide, everything has been automated. Okay. So now, so now the next question is, which I wanted to tell you is what is Maven? So Maven is not a build tool. Okay. Maven is not a build tool. It is a project management tool. Okay. 
Why? Because it can manage all of your project starting from the directory structure till site generation, deployment, versioning, packaging and everything. It will do everything. Whereas Ant or MS build, we call it build tool. Okay. It will not manage your project means it will not do everything automatically. So it can manage your project and building is one of the capabilities which we have in the Maven. So now, yes, it is a free, it is open source, <clears throat> it is uh, based in the, written in Java, okay, for the Java project, can be used for other technology, other tech, okay, now this is all about it. So I hope you understand what is a Maven by now. Can I go ahead and get into the discussion of how to understand Maven? Can you, can I go ahead? Yes, yes, we can. Okay. So now I am going to teach you. Remember, I am not going to teach you scripting, but I am just I am going to give you the good amount of the lecture and demo on that how Maven works because there is no scripting as such. So let me tell you, Maven has been developed using plugin concept. Okay, so now you must be wondering what is this all about it. So basically plugin or sometime you call it plugin, sometime you call it module, sometime you call it add-on, sometime you call it component, sometime you call it extension. It's up to you what you want to call it. Different tools, different terminologies. Okay, so plugins concept is a way in which you write a code. Okay, which can understand, understand plugin. <clears throat> and what is a plugins? So plugins are features. So in a simple way, in Maven also this concept has been used. So you have a code which has been developed and, and we have a plugins. So if you want any features on the plugins, uh, any feature on the Maven, then you install the plugins. Okay. So basically there are two kind of plugins which is we have inbuilt and external plugins okay we have two kind of plugins so now you understand maven has been developed using the plugin concept there is a two things in this uh, maven you have a core which can understand the plugin and based on your requirement uh, based on the requirement uh, you install the plugins and if you don't need don't install the plugin. It's just like this you I need it now I will install it. I will use it if I don't need I don't need it simple. So uh, This plugin so again plugins are two types inbuilt plugin and external plugin. So some of the plugins uh, Maven has given by default. Okay, this is the they are already installed. Okay installed with the Maven installation installed with default uh, default A default Maven installation okay but if you if you find some of the functionality which is not there in the Maven default plugins and installation you can also extend this and to with external plugin and there are more than thousand Maven external plugins are available okay you have external plugins are available so you have it a lot of okay so you have to get it now you must be wondering, okay, this is the way, but now what I'm going to do, how to install Maven? How to install Maven? So Maven installation for the Maven, you need a prerequisite Java, okay? Prerequisite Java, JDK, okay? That is important or you can have a JRE also, but I will, I will refer, uh, prefer the JDK because you are also going to compile. So JDK using that only you can compile. JRE will not help you to compile. So install the JDK only that will help you. Okay. And then install the Maven. So installation of the Maven is very simple. Download. Unzip. 
then add a pin directory into the path that's all you have to do so what is the meaning of download so just go and google it maven download and just go see this is the system requirement you have a jdk 1.7 minimum okay now you can download this zip file okay if you are on linux you can get this one if you are on windows you can get this one in fact this will work in the linux also this will work in the windows also there is no problem the reason is simple java is a platform independent okay so wherever you want you can get it so you download and unzip this file and you know that how to unzip it and keep it in one location and add a bin directly into the path. So what is this? So normally I keep all of my tools in the C drive. Okay. So C this is the C drive. I will go to the tools. Okay. This is the tools. Okay. So I keep it installed all of my tools in the same directory. So if you go here, I have a unzip my maven dot uh, maven uh, archive file here. So if you have archive here and there is one file called bin right so just you add this into the path so i hope you know that how to add into the path so this is in linux okay path environment uh, this is in windows but if you want to use in the linux then you have to do export something like that export a uh, dollar path export path is equal to dollar path and like this and this one okay so you have to do this one so be mindful about it so this is the way you can set it up how to install maven is it clear is it clear yes okay very simple now now how to verify maven how to verify so if I install the Maven correctly, I go to the command line and put it Maven and it should show something, some thing, but which is not a command not found. Okay. It is failing. No problem. Uh, it is failing. Pro no problem. But it should not say Maven command is not found or something like that. That means it is installed. Okay. How to verify? Just put Maven. Simple. How to check the version number? So just you type mbn mbn hyphen version and you have you see that this is the version which you are using maven space uh, 3.3.9 and this is the home directory this is the jdk version java home is set to this default locale is english and this is the operating system okay so now you got it this one okay now you are done with this so now you understood why we are using maven how it works and all okay it works on how to install maven how to verify how to check the version now i am done with it so what is the next topic so basically the next topic i just said i am not going to teach you how, how to write a script in maven because there is no scripting i am going to teach you how maven works and in order to how maven works you need to know how maven is designed for the problem statement for the problem statements so now you have to understand the problem statement so tell me one thing i am going to looking i am looking for your uh, inputs over the voice okay uh, what is the life cycle of human? What is the life cycle of human? Are you able to hear me guys? Yeah, it's a uh, it's, uh... It's in the womb first, then it's uh, the baby, then you grow up, you become a yeah, so you uh, started teenager. You're born, then you become a kid, then you become a teen, 
then you become young then you can you reach to the mid level and then you become a old and then die this is the something like a life cycle of human if you say what is the life cycle of what is the life cycle of project for any of any project so basically what is the life cycle so basically what happens you start with the requirement analysis you code you compile you test you package you verify you deploy you test again acceptance testings and then you release this is the life cycle right starting to end correct correct right i'm guys if you don't tell me i will not be able to understand whether you are hearing me or not you have to speak up yeah, yeah. this is a life cycle typical actually typical life cycle of any software project so basically as i said software project and remember what i said here maven is a project management tool so here software project management tool okay software project management tool so now as part of your software project these are the things you do that and maven are supposed to automate everything so basically what maven has given you maven has three life cycle human has one life cycle wonderful but maven has three life cycle one is we call it default another we call it site and another we call it clean okay so these are the three life cycle so we have one life cycle and we maven has three life cycle default is the most important okay most important so you can get started okay site is third i'll keep it and clean is the second most important so just like this see we can become a young that's fine but only after getting the born we directly cannot be young okay we have to born we have to become a kid we have to become a teen and then only we can become a young okay it's like that you cannot become a young or mid directly so same way default these what is this called these are called phases okay these are the called phases correct these are the case phases of this life cycle of the human so similarly d4 life cycle has 24 phases oh okay of the software development so now you must be wondering okay what are those phases so let me show you over this maven life cycle <coughs> just click on it <coughs> not a good url Hmm. This is good URL. Let me share with you over the chat. <coughs> so if you look at this life cycle reference, so Maven has three life cycle. Okay, <coughs> I'm sorry. Okay, so Maven has three life cycle. One is default, another which clean, another is site. So it's like this: default, clean, and site. So what are the phases we have? These are the phases. So look at this: validation, initialization, generate sources, process sources, process resources, process classes, process test, test, dot 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 till here. So let me tell you: you can reach to deploy deploy stage only if you start from here. You can reach to the compile stage. only if you start from here it's like this is a human rule right i can become a mid only if i born if i die only if i become a kid teen uh, uh, young mid and old then only i can die i cannot die without born and without being kid and stuff like that right 
so it's like this so these are the phases are dependent so that means if you want to deploy then all these phases has to be executed first so some of this i'm not going to take all these phases because no one uses all these phases actually so let's talk about some of the phases which we use very often so if you look at this compile phases which you use very often okay and uh, test phases which you use very often we use packages which you use very often then uh, let's say integration testing you can do here okay uh, like selenium qtp and all kind of things uh, let's use the install and stuff like that so these are the packages which you use very often okay Th sorry these are the phases so what is happening this are uh, these are the phases so what happened with these phases how can you call these phases okay how can you call the phases next question is these are the phases okay don't get confused these are the sum of the phases now next question is how can you call these phases that means how can you bring the uh, project into the compilation state how can you start doing the testing phase and all so how can you call these people how can you call these phases so basically in order to call these phases you have a goal okay you have a goal that is goal and fortunately the goal name and phase name are same compile test package and install so remember when i say you have a phase which is called compile so you understand phases but when i say you have to call the goal compile that is means goal so you use this is a functionality this is a concept am i clear am i clear yes is clear wonderful now so as we stated just me recall it maven has a three life cycle one important one is a default second one is clean and side default is the most important default life cycle has 24 phases and these phases some of these important phases are compile test package install and how can you call these phases you can call through the goal name that is called maven com uh, compile test package and install this are a phase is the process a phase is the concept goals are a functionality now you must be wondering how this goal has been implemented so remember i did told you maven is around uh, where is that ha huh. maven is having the two kind of plugins one is inbuilt plugin one is external plugins inbuilt plugins are installed with the default installation so basically these goals are linked with the plugin so this is linked with a compiler plugin this link this link i'm just not giving you the right name but test plugin just to understand this one i'll give you the right name while i'll show you the demo okay this is related to the packaging plugin and this is related to the install plugin okay install plugins now this plugins is internal plugins which is given means inbuilt plugin which is given by the by the maven installation so if you want uh, something else which is the feature is not there so you have to install the external plugin that's a different concept now so here what we have stood okay maven has a phases maven has a same goal name maven and this goal name is being called from where this function is being called from where compiler plugin so compiler plugin this is a this functionality is written okay so basically main class file and stuff like that so now you understood this one okay uh, any questions on this uh, life cycle any questions
okay wonderful now so the problem here is like i promised you i am going to automate all these things through the through the through the uh um, maven because maven will help you to automate everything right so if you look at this look at this task project name cannot be manual because you have to decide the project name but directory structure maven it says automated and it says manual build provision is says automated Ma and uh, maven so um, all this activity whichever is automated i need to show you right i don't you i need to show you right so here first thing project uh, directory structure okay so now my voice is breaking okay sometimes this networks are like uh, uh, behaving odd uh, okay 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 yeah so now <coughs> okay now so uh, yes yeah, so i just said you have to automate it so i mean you don't have to automate it so everything automated so how can you create a project directory structure automated so let me talk about it how to clean has three phases site has four phases which we'll talk about later now the question is how can you create project directory structure automated way so i am going to give you one line of command and that is this one how can you create project directory structure automatically so my project name is product x right we discuss right product x so i have to create a directory structure for the my product because i am my i am going to start my first day where the creation of this so project is starting with a creating a right directory structure so how can you create it so this command will create your directory structure automatically now you must be wondering what the heck do i need to remember all this command no you need to understand this command that's all so here let me talk about this one arc type is the plugin name okay i just said maven is built around the plugins so arc type is a plugin name and generate is the goal just like a goal here we have it compile test package install generate is a goal so in this plugin there is one goal which is called generate using that you can create a project directory structure automated way so let me define it plugin goal okay goal name now next is is like this what is this so here d is the way in which you can pass the parameter to the maven so you can pass any parameter to the maven over the command line you have to pass it with a hyphen d so just leave it this guy okay and now what is group id so now what is artifact id let's understand this two together so it's like this do you know adobe adobe company cool so now you do you know adobe is a company name now they have products not one and two or not four or five they have around 200 plus product now 
CTO has a problem managing 200 products because they can't remember the all the product name they cannot remember all the dependencies in fact developers and QA project manager directors everyone need to wants to have the naming convention streamlined for the each of these 200 products so you can refer it in a better way you can use it in a better way you can package it in a better way and stuff like that so on that front only we got the things like that okay your company name is adobe and in that we have a photoshop we have a flash you have a dreamweaver we have acrobat acrobat so these are the popular products so now how can i create a package structure for all the software so let's put it like this com is a company name okay com is a commercial company name if you are an organization then you put it org okay if you are just like apache.org and stuff like that so com is a commercial company name and com what is the company name adobe and uh, software okay so company name adobe adobe software is photoshop flash dreamover so if i package it my product then i will package it in this way actually so that means if you look at the any source code of any product you will see this line package line like this package structure will be like in this okay you will see like this in the any source code no matter whether it's java or .net c++ any package uh, any uh, object oriented perl python and all you will see like this okay so this is your packaging structure defined by the company to understand the each of these packages so in this here your group id group id will be com.adobe.software and photoshop flash uh, dreamover will become artifact id artifact id okay so now did you understand what is the difference between the group id and artifact id clear swati cool yeah so now it's like this so now we have this is a group id this is a artifact id so now if i am going to generate the skeleton of my project direct structure then I need to pass what is your group ID, what is your artifact ID. So that is what I have done. Here if you look at this, this is your group ID, com.companyname.software. It can have anything and your product name is financial services. That's called artifact ID. So now you put it maven is your command, archetype is a plugin name, generate is a goal name which is coded in the archetype plugin d group id is your com dot company group id is your this one artifact id is this one and now these are the some additional parameters in which i said what are the templates i need an interactive mode you want true or false something like that and this command will create a directory structure in an automated way did you understand now this long commands any confusion any questions any questions any confusion okay cool so now i am going to run the same command in one line this has to be one line be mindful about it and separated by space okay so i just put it in one line separated by space now what i will go i will go to my d drive so d drive i'll put it and mkdir and what i am doing today uh, yeah, it's a case sensitive. Be mindful about it. This is a case sensitive. Okay, so this is the way D has to be in caps group ID has to be in small like that. Okay, so what I'm doing? Yes, I'm creating a directory structure in D drive and let me put it like uh, Saturday. Did I did I create it Saturday, right? Saturday. Yes, is there and I'm going to create map and directory. 
and CD Maven. If you look at this directory structure, it has nothing. It has nothing, but I am going to create a skeleton for my product, which is called product X. So let me rename this guy financial services to product X. Okay. That way it will be discussion will be in line with the implementations also. So I just copy this code and put it in this command line and it's empty directory. I showed you and now this plugins will generate a skeleton which is recommended by the maven to have a first start of your project okay and now it will take few seconds to generate uh, things it will take much faster if i do in aws but as of now for this training aws is not required for the other training like a chef puppet and uh, jenkins and all i will use the aws now you see that everything has created build success there is no failure it took 23 seconds now if you want to go and look at the directory structure here is your directory structure name is product x here you have a pom.xml that is your configuration file for the maven and i will explain you this one better way in some time and now if you see that source here you have a source and now you have to follow a maven sage if you want me to automate everything for you you have to follow my directory structure okay so that's the reason you see that this is a similar directory structure you will come across with any of the project which is supported with the maven okay but sometimes you find little bit of customization that is okay but most of the time 90 percent you will find the something similar directory structure Okay, so you have a product inside that you'll be having one source directory. Here you can keep the main source code and here you can keep the test source code. Okay, so main source code again that it's in Java, com, company name, software and this is your file which is a source code and under the test Java, com, company name, software which you know that and this is your test code. So every test code will go inside the test directory, every source code will go inside the main source, main directory and that is how you manage it. Am I making any sense? You have to respect their stuff. Okay, now next thing. So we have created a directory structure. As per the discussion, remember I showed you Creating a third point, creating a project directory structure automated way. I did not create it manually, making directory, this directory, this file. I did not have to spend time on it. I just ran one of the plugin, one of the goal with some of the parameter and boom, you got this project directory structure. Now what is next? So I want you to compile the product. So let's go into the fifth, sixth goal number, compile. How can you compile automatically? So before compilation, you need to have a source code. I, ha I got one source code actually, which is default created by the preparation, which is here. But I want as a developer, I want to add more source code. So let me add more source code. App1.java. Okay, and let me add as I'm adding a developers using the git, I'm committing, doing a lot of things, and I'm adding so many source code. Now, I will, you know, that it has to be changed that uh, uh, this one also because otherwise, compile failure will be there. So, you have to change the class name also. It's doing nothing but system, system out some of the hello world or something like that. So, now you got it. I got it, the source code done so i got the three source code okay now i got ready so now you have to do what you have to as per the discussion you have to do the following things you have to do the compile automatically you have to do the testing automatically you have to do the packaging automatically you have to do all this thing okay and you have to do clean up also automatically these four things i'll show you how to do automatically in short span of time so now i will go to me and now how to do few thing a few uh, how to do few uh, uh, phases automatically i'm calling one not all because it's just time wasting so how can you do the, all this thing so simple you go 
and run mbn and goal name compile directly you can write the compile uh, plugin names also plugin name and colon compile goal name but uh, uh, if the plugin name is inbuilt you do not have to uh, print the plugin name that's directly you can call the goal name so maven and goal name which is called compile remember this is the goal name i showed you goal name test da 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 but this is a fetch okay just remember be mindful so this is a compile and it says fail why it is fail because it is looking for pom file p o m pom.xml that is not there why is not there because it's there inside the product text so remember whenever you run the command you should be having pom file so i get into the product text and now mbn compile and now you see that command line this is the this is the plugin name you see that i told you you can write your plugin name version number of the plugin and this is the goal so this is the basically the plugin this is being called so i told you right i will tell you later which plugin is being called so for this this plugin is being called uh oh this plugin is being called did you understand now which plugin is being called this is the plugin name okay okay so now you did compile and it got success wonderful how come i did not write even single line of the code and it got compiled so where is the compile code so let me tell you everything which is generated by maven after the process of following it will keep it in the target okay everything will go into the target so now you have a classes com company name software and this you have a three source file you have a three class file that's your binary you so so easily you compile right now we have to do next next is i have to do testing and for the testing you need to have a test code without that you will not be able to do the testing so but if you remember i have one simple test code java com software all this this is a simple test code okay this test code has been written in j unit this is this is the package structure package com company name this is your group id okay so you have to remember so now this is the this is the external library which is being used and this is the test code which has been given by the uh, sam for the sampling okay so now what do you do just go mbn test it's calling the goal name test it will call that testing uh, that thing and now see which which uh, which uh, uh, plugin is being called in order to do the testing so this plugin is being called see the plugin name is surfire and the goal name is test so the, you must be wondering why the compiler plugin is coming so remember whenever you do the test and i told you right in the terms of phases where is the phases where is the phases here so if you call the testing then it has to be calling compilation also that means from here to here all these things will be executed so you have to be mindful about that okay so now you did the testing that means testing will include the compilation also so resource generation has happened compilation has happened something else has happened which is called test resources here it resource goal resource goal will be taken from where somewhere i think here generate sources generate resources here here okay so all these things is happening these are the phases okay now yeah so you got the build success one test run it was only one test file failure zero error zero skip wonderful now you can see the test reports over there but also you can see the test report in the target test classes this is the test classes you have only one test so you got it this one now you want to see the reports so here is a surfire report this is the reports actually okay and all this thing so did you get it how it can be uh, compiled and test and stuff like that any confusion so far 
Yes. Now you have to do the package. So just to call the goal name. MBN PACKEJ. And now you see that compilation has happened. Test has happened. And next one is has packaging. Packaging which in, using which jar? Uh, which plugin? So this is the plugin name. Maven hyphen jar plugin. And this is the goal name. Package will call this goal name. Okay. And the packaging happened. What is the packaging? This is the location of the packaging. Where to find it out? Again in target directory. Go to the product text target. And this is the package which you created. Now you must be wondering how this name has got it. Now you need to explore much more. So before going further, did you understand it so far? Wonderful. <clears throat> okay. So now next thing is, what is this guy who is doing every time? Because pom.xml is important. So it did not allow me to run the command which is called mom or maven. So let me tell you, maven, the moment you type, it look for the pom.xml in the current directory. But if you have a different file name, then you do maven hyphen f and then file name dot xml okay so be mindful about it okay now what this guy contains so pom stand for the project object model this is the one of the concept in xml based that means pom is xml based file which contains which contains the configuration of maven okay okay hiran just wait for 10 more minutes okay just wait for 10 more minutes or uh, we are i'm wrapping up okay just wait for 10 more minutes okay okay great so let's understand the pom.xml okay so what is a pom.xml? So pom.xml is a configuration file. It's XML based. We call it project object model. This is one of the best con co concept in XML in which Maven store the store the changes and Maven understand only the project object made model based XML. So if you look at this file, you see that all this thing is basically XML. Okay, it's XML. So now you must be wondering. Okay, what is XML? So it's contain the configuration of the file. So now let me show you and let me help you to understand this one. First project is starting with the project, ending with the project. Okay, so inside that you have everything. So you have to be mindful about it. Now I am going to skip these three lines because this is the POM specification. If this specification is not there, then it will, uh, Maven will not able to understand this file. Okay, so be mindful about it. This is a common across all the pom.xml. Now if you see the group ID, do you recall? I provide the group ID and artifact ID over the command line while creating the structure. So that is you have it. So this group ID, you got it from here. Okay, you insert it here. Now packaging. So Maven supports packaging in Maven. So Maven supports following kind of packaging jar which is a default okay var ear pom and i think one more i don't remember right now okay so these are the packaging which supports supported by maven so that jar was the default that's the reason you got the jar and that is the one of the reason your packaging is also jar you see that this is a jar if you put it a pom if you put it a uh, var or something var will be created with the some more uh, specification stuff like that okay now what is this version so maven has two kind of version okay version in maven so in maven we have only two kind of version okay one is called release and another one is called snapshot snap short release is something like a final product final version okay final and stable version okay stable version 
Now, snapshot is something like non-stable. So, whenever you put the snapshot, that means this product is still under development. You may use it, these packages, but I am not giving you guarantee like that all the functionality will work. But the moment you, it become a release, then how to specify the release? 1.0 or 1.0. Uh, 0.1 like this and when, how do you specify the snapshot you like it uh, you write it like 1.0 hyphen snapshot okay the moment you do hyphen snapshot that will become unstable and the moment you remove this hyphen snapshot that will become unstable so maven has two kind of version now you saw that this is the versioning the product name itself you have given product x you know that artifact id this is the company URL you should provide that. So let me put it uh, www.scmgalaxy.com your company name and now here you see this one of the dependencies. So as I said dependencies management remember here you have two kind of dependencies external and internal maven is having inbuilt dependencies management capability that means the moment you say your product x is dependent on j unit maven will automatically download these dependencies okay so how come this j unit is dependent so remember you have a code which you have it here under the test test java com company name software and this code has been written using one of the library which is called JUnit. So that means if JUnit library is not copied into the J, uh, JVM then this code will not be able to compile and execute it. So in order to this code to execute it this JUnit jar file has to be there in your environment. So how to include that? So you just have to modify and say that okay group ID of that uh, jar file is this one artifact ID is this one and 3.8 that's a version number this has to be executed during only the test phase this is a phase not goal remember scope is phase so during the testing phase and maven will automatically download <coughs> the jar file to the local repository so maven has maven has inbuilt dependency management capability management capability capabilities okay now how maven store these dependencies so how maven store this these dependencies so basically maven has three maven has three kind of repository okay three kind of repository one is local repository one is central repository and third one is private repository okay so local repository is located by default in the user home slash m2 and central repository is nothing but apache repo.maven.apache.org this is the central repository you have thousands of packages here which is third party packages okay and private repository you will be setting up for your organization which is nexus artifactory archiva and stuff like that okay so now how it works so basically maven first look for the let's say the package dependencies uh, j unit so maven first look for the local repository okay local repository and after the local repository if it is finding out then it using it if it did not finding out then it download from the central repository central repository copy in the local repository and then use it okay 
is like this. So let me draw this diagram again. So Maven look for Maven look for the repository first in the dot m2. Okay, if it is finding out, then wonderful. They use it the dependency. If it is not finding out, then it hit the central and try to download to the local dot m2 and then from there use it. This is the way it works and private repository I will talk about when we will talk about the nexus. Okay, so now if you look at this, where is m2? So I go to the cmd start dot. This is my user home and do you have m2 which is here? Yes repository and these are the repository which you need it uh, which you have it so now let's say uh, repository which you needed for the testing JUnit right so you click on the JUnit which is here and this is the artifact ID so artifact ID which version you needed 3.8.1 this is the one so if this is here that's the reason Maven did not download from the somewhere else so let me delete this one local repository okay I'm just deleting this one and now I type MBN test now you see that is downloading see from where central repository why because it did not find in the local so now it is downloading from the central repository and copying where you are copying here see and then use it test it get it done so now Maven has three kind of repository, local repository, central repository and private repository. And this is the explanation of Maven, how Maven works. Okay. With this, I am going to conclude that, remember, you understood what is a group ID, artifact ID, packaging, version, name, URL, dependencies, how, to, what are the goals, what are the phases and all this stuff. You have any questions till now, so far. Any question? Swati, Hiren, Hiren are you there with me? Uh, Rajesh, I have a question. Please. Uh, like uh, now bomb.xml is in the project level. Yeah. Suppose I have a, I have a different modules and sub modules and I'm managing uh, uh, sub projects uh, for those sub modules and I want to uh, I want to yeah, yeah. Uh, have question. a I got you. I got you. requirement. Wonderful question, but that is let it remain for the next session that's called Maven Advance. Okay. Oh, okay, fine. We'll talk yeah. about tomorrow that Maven Advance. Yeah, sure. Yeah, but you have to practice it till tomorrow. Swati, any questions? Swati, are you there with me? Guys, are you sleeping or what? Uh, no questions. Okay. Yes, you can change the name. I just said you missed the topics. You can have a change the main name, but that time you can call the Maven hyphen F and the file name. Okay. Okay, so with this, I am going to wrap it up the session. Uh, what I am going to do, I am going to upload these videos today in some time and then I am going to send you a link for this. I am going to upload the notes also and I am going to send a link uh, to you. And you guys are going to practice Git and Maven and uh, do that as much you can and then uh, we will get into the next topic okay so tomorrow what i'm planning right now i'm planning for the ms build and uh, let let's conclude the maven in whole and uh, let's uh, have the ms build so let's do that two topics tomorrow uh, ms build uh, sorry maven uh, ms build and sometime if the time permits then we'll do the git advance also okay Okay, bye guys. Have a nice evening. Have a nice day. Have a nice weekend. Bye. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries. We will reply to them at the earliest. Want to study further? Subscribe to our paid membership to get a deep dive into each and every topic. 
to look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to our DevOps School channel and hit the bell icon to learn more. Keep learning.